it out. It's crazy, but and I'll do a little DIY video on that. Make it fit. It's Lydia here. Welcome back. As you saw, I found this Canadian made brand new boiler suit in a vintage shop. It's quite big and low waisted with weird openings on the side. Let me know if you know what those weird openings are for. It kind of has a very basically sewn zipper up the front. So I just want to make this boiler suit fit me. So I start by bringing the waist to where I want it and marking it with a pin. I measure half an inch below that marking for seam allowance and take note of this measurement from the top of the waistband. I mark this measurement all the way around the garment. I then mark half an inch seam allowance along the waistband and cut it. Next, I am opening up the side waistband so I can close and reduce the side opening on both sides. Then I take in the waistband to match the new side seam. I am then trying to see how much I need to reduce the center back waist. And I mark a center line for where I want to place the darts because I can't reduce the center back seam or else the pockets will be too close together. I measure the center back waist reduction, which is two inches, so each dart needs to be a total of one inch pinched. I pinch the dart and mark it, making sure they are the same distance from each other. Then I sew them. Once these are done, they should be pressed with the dart bulk towards the center. Next, reduce the center back waistband with a seam that lines up with the center back seam. Then, I'm sewing the outer and inner waistband back onto the pant. I finish it with a double top stitch. I've now taken the bodice top, which is too big, and I'm sewing it with a large stitch to create gathers. I gather the center area of each garment quarter until it matches the length of the new waistband.
With right sides of the fabric together, I now attach the outer waistband to the bodice. Be sure to even out the gathers as you sew so that the puckers look even. Next, I pinned the inner waistband to the outer seam that was just created. I top stitch through all thicknesses and, and I make sure that the inner waistband is in place as I sew and also remove pins as I go along. To hem the sleeve, I line up all seams so I get an even length on both sides. I mark the desired length and add an inch for seam allowance. In this shot, I actually added an inch and a half because I thought I wanted a thick hem, but I ended up with a double folded half inch hem instead. For the hem of the pant, I have marked where I want the hem to end, and I add a two inch seam allowance but beyond that marking. Then I fold up half an inch and then another inch and a half and sew close to the folded edge. Now I had originally sewn the zipper back in but I found it to gape a lot because the original construction was quite basic. I also realized I would have to either shorten the zipper or get a shorter zipper to match the new length. So I opted for the crazy, time-consuming hidden button placket. An alternative is to just have exposed buttons on the bodice and maybe a fly zipper below the waistband. Or you could have exposed buttons all the way down. So all you would have to do was sew on all the buttons and add buttonholes, which is still kind of time-consuming, but a zipper is definitely easy, easiest but I chose what I thought would be the most quality looking construction because I knew this would ensure a longer life in my wardrobe. So to create this hidden button placket, I measured the overlapping side. It came to be about a, an inch and a half. I cut a rectangle the length of the closure area and doubled the width. So 1.5 times two is three inches and the length was around 20 inches. Next, I line up the button placket with the overlapping side and mark where the waistband is and where I want it to end at the top. I then mark where I want the buttons to sit. There is more space between buttons on the bodice and less space between buttons at the fly. If you own a pair of traditional button fly front jeans, you'll understand why it's a good idea. I then measure the radius of the button or the center holes to the outside edge of the button so that I know how far in to place the buttonhole markings. So it was about a half inch. The length of your buttonhole should be an eighth bigger than the button and should be centered on the original dots that you mark. I use my buttonhole settings on my domestic machine to create these buttonholes. When you cut open a buttonhole, start from the outer edge and go in and then repeat on the other side so that you don't slip and cut the stitches on the opposite end. Once all the buttonholes are present, I will align my button placket with the waistband and the top edge where I marked, and I'll pin it in place.
I sew the placket to the entire length of the bodice and fly. Then I sew across the bottom and about a half inch up the opening edge to finish. Next, I line up the finished placket as if it is closing on the body and pin it in place. I then use the buttonholes to mark where the button should be sewn by placing a dot through the center of the buttonhole. I mark the waistband button at the top of the buttonhole so that the waistband is always aligned perfectly on both sides. Then with quadrupled thread, I sew each button on, wrapping the thread around twice at the end to create a strong shank. I debated whether to do this or not, but I opted to take the snaps off so that I could have a cohesive look with my buttons. It was quite difficult. I actually had to get my husband involved. <laughs> He's so strong. But when I took them off, I realized they left behind a yucky rust stain and, of course, holes. So I had to doctor these areas with patches and zigzag stitches. And it turned out quite nice and seamless. I actually replaced the whole top side that overlaps and added only one exposed button in the top area. I also tried to patch the pocket flap, but it looked really bad to me, so I decided to just replace the entire flap. When I put the pocket flap on, I place it about 3 8 of an inch from the top of the pocket and sew at 1 8. Then I fold it down and sew at a quarter inch making sure I don't sew my pocket closed. I then add a buttonhole and cover the rest stain on the pocket with a, an accompanying button. So I removed the snaps, patched and zigzagged the stains and holes, and added an exposed button to the top area. I replaced the pocket flap. I shortened the sleeves with a double half inch fold. I brought up and fitted the waistband to my natural waistline and added gathers at the bodice. I added a hidden button placket with small tacks in strategic places to keep it from gaping. I spaced the buttons closer together at the fly and further apart on the bodice. I closed those weird openings at the hip. I cropped and hemmed the pant with a one and a half inch hem, and on the back I added gathers to the bodice waist and darts to the back pant. Thank you so much for watching. I really enjoyed altering this boiler suit and I hope that you guys can go find one in a vintage store or thrift shop and do it for yourselves too. Um, if you like this video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Let me know any questions you have in the comments and bye for now.